Well, praise the Lord, saints. Here we are back again in part five of our study on wisdom. And uh, I ran a little long on part four. In fact, I ran uh, a lot longer than I intended to. I tried to keep the sections or the parts within 15 or 20 minutes. And part four was uh, a long or the neighborhood of over 30 to 35 minutes or so. I won't necessarily do the same thing on this part. However, the study, I'm going to carry it on in, uh, it'll still be about wisdom, but I'm going to address in greater detail uh, some of the areas where man's wisdom is part and parcel what is destroying uh, this nation and especially the black community. Our principal scripture for this study is wisdom, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 7, where it says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. And a companion scripture for that is Hosea 4 and 6, where it says, the first part, I'm going to read it. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Uh, I'm going to finish that scripture. It says, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. In other words, God's making a plain warning here. And then uh, another scripture we're going to use that I uh, delved into a little bit, Proverbs chapter number 14, verse 12, and also Proverbs 16 and 25, where it says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Uh, I'm going to read some of these other scriptures here. Proverbs chapter 15 and 2 says, The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, or uses knowledge correctly, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Proverbs 3 and 7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from wisdom. And I had just started uh, going into an area specifically addressing the black community and the plight of the black community in this nation and why does it seem that every time things go bad for the nation, it's a disaster for the black community? And I had started talking about the scripture found in James chapter 2, verse 1, where it says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. And I have been talking about how that the black community, uh, if, we, if we want to look at the condition of the black community, it is far more than racism that is causing our problem. If it were only racism, well, even if it, were, if, even if it was racism, uh, you're not going to cure uh, racism by legislation or passing laws saying something is wrong and if you and that if you violate the law you're going to get punished for it. The reason why I say that would not work is because primarily using wisdom again. God has given us all types of commandments and given us the warning of what happens if we violate those commandments and we don't we don't even follow those. So you are you seeing the point here legislating something is not the problem. The problem, what we have to learn to do is to put ourselves in a position that when we're faced with adversity or trouble, 
that we become victorious over it. And the only way we're going to do that is if we use the wisdom that God has given us to use, which is his word. You cannot ignore what God has to say in any situation. Even when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, when you eat your food or whatever, whatever. Ignoring God, not thanking him for the food, thanking him for keeping you while you were sleeping or before you go to bed, asking him to keep you while you're sleeping. See, a lot of the things we take for granted. We take for granted because it's been going good for us all of our lives and things and so forth. And so therefore, we don't, we don't, we tend to put God on the back burner and we tend to think that uh, some areas that are in our lives where we're having problems, we don't need God's input. You need God's input in everything. You ignore him in any area, His word, what his word has to say in any area of your life, and you are opening yourself up for a possible disaster. And I was talking about how that in the black community, uh, especially in the black church, because see, the black community uh, keeps the stance that it has about things based on what they hear from black preachers in what is known as the black church. I explained last uh, in the last part how that the black church is a cult. It's a cult just like the Baptist church is a cult. The Catholic Church is a cult. The Presbyterian Church is a cult. Any other denomination you want to name, it's a cult. Uh, if if even if it's a if it's labeling itself as a white church, it's all a cult. Now, the Supreme Court might say, well. Uh, affirmative action is is right in this area, and it is not reverse discrimination. Well, what the Supreme Court has to say makes no difference with what God says. And I just read the scripture here in James chapter 2, verse number 1. It says, My brother, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. Then it gives in verse 2, For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and then come also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing and say unto him, sit thou here in the good place and say to the poor, stand thou there or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Now right here, uh, we can look at the circumstance and instead of saying that the man comes in, in a, with a gold ring and with goodly apparel, substitute a gold ring and a goodly apparel for saying if a person comes into your assembly that's white and you say come here and, and, and sit here in the good place. And then a black person comes in and, and you tell him, instead of uh, vile apparel or bad apparel, use black. If a black person comes in, you tell him to go stand over there. Then verse 2 says, for then uh, are you not become, I mean, verse 3 says, uh, are you not then basically being partial in yourselves? And verse number 4, really, uh, excuse me. Verse 4 says, Are you not then partial in yourselves and become judges of evil thoughts? Now, if, if, if I was to address the black community and say this is what, the white, what whites are doing to blacks, I would get a rousing amen from the congregation in a black church. However, if I turned around and said, using verse uh, 2 again, for if there come one into your assembly, a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, 
and I'm going to turn it around and say where the goodly, the, the gold ring and the goodly repair, apparel translate that for black. And then I say, and then there come also somebody else in, uh, a poor man with vile raiment, and uh, call that call that person white. What are you going to have then? So what we have then, now that the the roles have been reversed, where the the black person is the one that's got the goodly apparel, and the white person is the one with the vile apparel, I present this same scenario to the black church. And I get ostracized. No, you can't do it like that. See, because you got to look at look at how things are in the how, how it's been over two hundred years or so. The black community has been suffering this, that, and other. Remember the scripture that I read up Proverbs chapter fourteen and twelve, and Proverbs sixteen and twenty five. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That is the result in the black community of the black community refusing to accept the fact that affirmative action is wrong. And in fact, we go so far as to make sure that any politician that we elect, the first thing is asked of them, where do they stand on affirmative action? First thing that the people look at, check it, checking the uh, the record of anybody in the past. What is their stance on affirmative action? We don't care what God says. We don't care what the Bible says. If we show, if if the black community in the black church is shown something that contradicts what the black community wants to hear, it's thrown out. It's it's basically saying in so many words, well. I know you've heard this one too. The white man wrote the Bible. See, we'll find any excuse to keep going the way we're going, believing what we want to believe and do what we want to do. When it comes down to the white community, they 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 listen and only in in some cases will you have those uh uh hardcore people that, that want to still stick with their race racist views but when it's when the thing is flipped over and it's the black person that you're looking at a black person can't be racist not because uh god calls it sin or anything like that but because the supreme court has said that it's not racism or it's not reverse racism we're looking to man for solutions to our problems when we need to be focused on what God has to say. I don't care what the Supreme Court says about a lot of things because a lot of times they're wrong. It's like with abortion. It's like women's groups, how they support abortion. Uh, you know, that's that's one of the litmus tests of whoever it is that's going to uh, get their vote where do they stand on abortion now thankfully there's a lot a lot of more people that are actually pro-life in other words they're against abortion and as a result uh, you know it's it's a case where uh, we're given some grace in that area but at the same time when it comes down to the black community the black community is the only one that if we look at it from uh, one sp specific standpoint that I was mentioning last in the last part, part three, I mean, part four, and that is we try to make it appear that God supports 
the foolishness that we are involved in. As a result of that, we do not repent of what we're doing. In fact, we just go headlong into it, don't want to hear what anybody has to say. And Proverbs 3 and 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. But the black community does not want to depart from evil. And one of the areas, in a, and in an area, you know, with things being the way they are today, and I'm going to get into this in, uh, I said I'm going to do an offshoot of this particular subject. I'm going to address wisdom in uh as it's, as it is uh as it relates to the economy and the way things are going in this country that in and of itself is going to bring out a lot more of the foolishness cuz see there's so much foolishness going on in government today and spe more specifically it has to do with one party see i could see it if people could legitimately, now think about this, if people could legitimately uh, come up with a reason why both parties, neither, neither party is uh, doing what's right, if they could legitimately do that, then the case that I'm making would be somewhat moot. But that's not the case. We have one party, and this is another area where the black community is uh, getting what it has sown because it keeps supporting this party irrespective of all of the evidence that shows what they're doing. We have one party that is as anti-God and as anti-Christ in its thinking in the legislation that it passes, in the appointment of judges and, and so forth uh, to lifetime positions in courts and on the Supreme Court and so forth. When you actively support a party that is as anti-God, now let me say this, neither party is perfect, but one party is showing you clear point i mean you know it, it, it's like you know you ever heard the expression that some people can't see the truth even though somebody's beating them over the head with it i mean you're getting beat over the head with the fact that this party is anti-god and yet and still the black community especially supports it hands down any other group in this country will support uh, this one party based on certain issues, but even then they are flexible enough where, you know, let's say for instance, the white community might support Democrats on certain things, but then at the same time, other things, they say, well, the Republicans have a better uh, plan, so we'll, they'll switch over and vote Republican. You can't get black folks to vote Republican, period. They'd rather die they support Republican, and to put it to put it in the frame of mind that so you can fully understand the uh, the mindset here, and that is the black community will support God as long as God is in the Democratic Party and and supports what uh, uh, the black folks want or think God should support. If God doesn't support it, then the heck with him. They don't need him. That, that is the mindset that runs rampant in the black community. Therefore, that's why I said in the last uh, chapter that the black community is cursed. This isn't racism, people. This is a curse. It's a curse that God said would come on those the bible says you know depart from e fear the lord and depart from evil black folks don't want to hear that
Not if God, not if God is saying they got to turn from the way they think about whites and, and affirmative action and all that other stuff. They don't want to hear that. And so what's the end result? They wind up suffering for it. And then what do they do? They run to the Democrats who definitely aren't seeking God's wisdom for anything. Or they put on a show. But they don't they don't support uh, what God has to say. They out here doing everything because most of the most of the people that support the uh, Democratic Party, the gay community, the National Organization of Women, and a lot of other groups, uh, environmentalist groups, all of these people spreading lies and everything else, uh, passing legislation based on lies and half truths and everything. And then when things go wrong, you know who they blame? They blame the Republicans. Foolishness. We need wisdom today in this nation, in the leadership of this nation, and especially in the church. I'm not going to say the black church. Well, the, the, like I say, the black church, black church is actually... Uh, an oxymoron or whatever you want to call it but uh, we need wisdom godly wisdom and that can only come once you know what God has to say about all of these issues if you're not if you're not following what God has to say concerning these issues then you are essentially headed for destruction, which the black community is doing headlong. So I'm going to close out now. Uh, this has just been 22 minutes. Ran a little long on this, but I'm going to close out now. But you stay tuned to what I'm, uh, what I'll be addressing as far as wisdom when it comes down to our economic situation. I'm going to show you how that the problems we're facing today in this nation are part and parcel called, I mean, caused by the legislation and so forth that the Democratic Party has put in place and is only designed to get you into a position where you will continue to support that party. Because that party, first of all, uh, puts legislation in place that puts you out of a job. Then at the same time, because their ultimate goal is to make you a slave to that particular party and their legislation. As long as people have money and can uh, go to schools and things where they can get a good education, you know, pay, pay for going to good schools where they can get a good education, they go there get the education and then they realize hey all this stuff about uh, uh, being rich and things is, is is not necessarily all that bad because you have more chance to do things that, that you need to do and there's nothing wrong with being rich well see Democrats don't like that they want you dependent on government and the only way they can get anybody dependent on government is that they have to put you in a position. If you got a good paying job, they got to destroy that job to get you out of that good paying job so you have to depend for government, for health care and everything else. But we will get more into that in uh, the next lesson. We're still going to be talking about wisdom, but I'm going to bring wisdom into the level of uh, how a lack of wisdom and a lack of knowledge is destroying us from the economical standpoint and what is all behind that. So I hope you have gotten something out of this message today. Before I close right now, I would like to ask you today, are you saved? I know a lot of what you heard today is making you mad. You're probably mad at me and probably don't want to hear anything else I have to say. But think about this. How is God going to get the message to you if you're doing something wrong if somebody doesn't tell you you're doing it wrong? You might, he might get it to you in your mind, 
But when things like that come in your mind, you might say, I don't know where I got that silly thought. I ain't never heard nobody say nothing about that before. Must be I'm, I must be losing my mind or something. No, God was speaking to you. You probably heard something like this before or thought this, but you never heard anybody address it or say it. Well, the day you heard somebody say it, that's just God reaffirming to you that what you might have been thinking in your mind is the truth. And right now, if you're not saved, I just want to ask you today, are you ready to give your heart to the Lord? I want you above all of everything else. If you don't want to listen to what I'm having to say in this area, at least think about this. You need to be saved if you want to go to heaven when you die. All it takes from you is a confession that you believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He was the only begotten son of God that he died on the cross for your sins and that he rose again for your justification. If you can accept those facts, all you have to do is just pray this little prayer. Just bow your head, close your eyes. Once again, I'm going to tell you if you're driving, just keep on driving, just repeat the words, but have this down in your heart. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am a sinner. I realize that I need you to come into my heart and to cleanse me of my sin. Right now, Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my heart. I accept your death on the cross. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again and that you're now in heaven and that you are waiting to be Lord of my life. And I want to thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I accept you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Now, see, that was a simple prayer. That's all it takes. Only thing, well, really, that's all it takes is the prayer, but you have to believe it in your heart. And you just confessed it with your mouth. And then according to that word, in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, where it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Having confessed that and believing it in your heart, congratulations, you are now saved. Thank God today. Go tell somebody about your conversion right now. Let them know that God is real. And also let them know that uh, you're hearing something today that, that is shedding some light on the problems that we're facing today. And it's not a politician that's going to deliver us, but rather it is God through Jesus Christ and his word that will do it. Good day to you all. God bless you and stay tuned for a, another area of wisdom that I'll be getting into on another time. Good day and God bless.